Areas up to 271 acres. Containment at 10 percent. Four homes have burned. 150 are threatened. More than 800 firefighters are on the lines right now. Seven of them have been injured. Mandatory evacuations are in effect, including the communities of Las Cumbres, Deer Creek, and the residents of Bear Creek Road from Hawk Ridge Road to Skyline Boulevard. We also learned today deputies arrested a man for looting after they say he targeted one of the evacuated homes. He's accused of stealing thousands of dollars in jewelry. Live team coverage on the Bear Fire and the two criminal investigations it has triggered. It all starts now, beginning with Action News reporter Phil Gomez, live in Boulder Creek. Phil? But the Bear Fire is expected to grow before it shrinks, reaching the containment lines made by firefighters where they hope it will burn out. Helicopters made aerial drops after noon because a drone flew in the airspace, forcing CAL FIRE to cease air operations. Hampered operations because we had to ground all of our aircraft that were dropping water on the fire. And, then, and that is a huge impact to our progress on controlling the fire. Mandatory evacuations remain in effect, but that didn't stop some, like this woman, from returning home. Inmate crews were cutting away fallen trees, and there was evidence of heavy aerial bombardments. A few homes sat empty along this ridge, and from this vantage point, the mountainside view was blocked by heavy smoke. I'm worried, actually, you know. Why? Well, I came into work today, and my town's all smoky, and as you can clearly see, and, and it's just hard to breathe. It sucks. Investigators trying to determine what caused a structure fire Monday night that ignited nearby brush, and sheriff deputies are dealing with burglaries in neighborhoods evacuated. People are displaced because of this uh, of this fire, and uh, we've devoted uh, a number uh, of our deputies to it, 24 hours a day, to patrol these areas to maintain uh, security. Uh, the two evacuation centers by the Red Cross at the Zianti Fire Station and uh, Lakeside Elementary School will remain open tonight. They are in a transition mode. They'll be turning into information centers. You'll, you'll be able to get counseling and hydration when they reopen tomorrow at 10 a.m. Dan. All right. Thank you very much, Phil. Continuing our team coverage, Action News reporter Felix Cortez live outside the Santa Cruz Sheriff's Office. More on two ongoing investigations. Felix. And Dan, those uh, investigations really fueled by this fire, one involving the illegal operation of a drone, the other involving an evacuated home that was looted and burglarized. To add insult to injury, Santa Cruz County Sheriff's deputies arrested this man Wednesday morning for burglarizing the home of a family who was forced to evacuate as a result of the Bear Fire. Investigators say 54-year-old Marlon Coy took more than $15,000 worth of goods from a home on Hidden Springs Lane. It's unconscionable, you know, to think that, you know, folks are, you know, they're already going through enough displaced by, you know, a fire in their area that they're concerned with and then uh, have to come home to find out that somebody's been there. The Sheriff's Department leading another investigation, this one surrounding a drone that brought the Cal Fire air attack to a complete halt. Every water drop, every retardant drop is one little factor into getting quick containment on this fire. Investigators looking for the operator of that drone who may have been driving a gray or silver Subaru hatchback. It's against the law to fly drones during fires or disaster operations and for good reason. Wednesday morning, the air attack was suspended for an hour, but fighting fires every minute counts and it could be the difference between life or death for firefighters. Minutes could count. For an example, in a worst case scenario, say we had a crew on the fire line who was experiencing a burnover condition where they were getting outrun by fire. We rely very heavily on that aerial aircraft to be able to come in and provide water drops directly in their location, retardant lines. And sheriff's deputies say they want to hear from anybody who may have information regarding the uh, operator of that drone. And deputies say they will continue to have a police presence in those areas that have been evacuated. Dan. Felix, thank you very much. Sheriff's deputies say if you see sus suspicious activity in or around the burn area, please call 911.
Our chief meteorologist, Lee Solomon, has been tracking the weather in the Santa Cruz Mountains throughout the day. And uh, it's not only what they dealt with today, but also what's coming up here. Yeah, we actually have a cold front coming up, which is sort of good and bad. We don't want the wind with the front, but we do with like the moisture. Sure. And of course, our rain is always a good thing when you got a fire going. And of course, my, you know, we got microclimates. The Santa Cruz Mountains certainly one of them. So what we're seeing is an increase certainly in relative humidity due to the marine layer, which is up at above about 1,000 feet now. We had the fog this morning. So you can see right along the coast, uh, fairly damp, you know, for this hour. This is good. And some of that is working inland, up to 50% now relative humidity in Gilroy. Up in the Santa Cruz Mountains, it's a little less than that. So as you go up in elevation or, of course, away from the coast, you see less of the marine influence. Winds picked up a little this afternoon, running at about 10 to 15 but generally lighter up in the Santa Cruz Mountains, so that's good. So all in all, I think they're holding their own, and the good news is relative humidities will continue to go up and temperatures will continue to go down, uh, which is good news for the firefighters. 65 right now up near the Bear Fire, 61% relative humidity, south wind at 5 to 8. So the wind direction has been coming in out of the west and then the south, southwest or southeast, so a little squirrely but light and pushing a lot of the smoke now northward a little bit, so the air quality has changed around a little bit. Yesterday it was unhealthy in Santa Cruz. Now it's unhealthy, but only for sensitive groups. If you have asthma, breathing issues, things like that, it's also unhealthy for everybody up in the Santa Cruz Mountains and then heading over towards San Jose because some of that smoke heading down the hill on the other side. Moderate air conditions uh, in terms of the quality uh, from Hollister to Salinas and back down around the peninsula. For the most part, we're doing okay. Not a lot of smoke unless, again, you're up in the Santa Cruz area where it's the thickest, and hopefully that will start to decline over the coming days when they get a handle on this and hopefully get this thing out maybe by the end of the week. All right, very good. Thank you, sir. You can check the KSBW app for the very latest on this fire. Evacuation orders are listed, the location of evacuation centers, as well as road closures.